One million words. That's how many words Buena Park students are being challenged to read by the end of the school year. This is a citywide initiative by the Buena Park School District in partnership with the Buena Park Library District and the City of Buena Park. The Footsteps to Brilliance initiative was launched at the Mabel Pendleton Elementary School in front of students who heard firsthand about how the school district plans to foster reading and learning abilities with the new technologies. Who loves to read? Yes. Who thinks that they could read a million words prior to the end of the school year? That is the challenge. We are posing a challenge to the school district. We hope that you'll accept. By the end of the school year, we want all of you and the city to read one million words. Who can promise me that? Buena Park School District Superintendent Greg Magnuson was pleased to make the announcement about the partnership with the Footsteps to Brilliance mobile application and the goals for its future. With our Buena Park Literacy Collaborative, the Buena Park School District has partnered with Footsteps to Brilliance as a model innovation city to, and this is the important part, provide free, engaging, age-appropriate vocabulary and English language development program for every child ages zero to nine in this community. <laughs> this is where our Classrooms Without Limits initiative becomes quite literal. And it's why we're here today, to share with you how in Buena Park we will leverage technology to support language development and literacy well beyond the classroom walls, to reach out to every child as early as possible so they may grow, learn, and someday lead in a connected world. Councilmember Dr. Elizabeth Swift told the students that as a child, she learned how to read from Mabel Pendleton, the namesake of their school. She also thanked the partners in the Footsteps to Brilliance initiative and explained how reading can help the students with their futures. The name of your school is Mabel Pendleton School. Mabel Pendleton was a real person. She was my first grade teacher. And two years before I had her as a first grade teacher, my husband, who wasn't my husband at the time, but my <laughs> husband had her as a first grade teacher. So Mabel Pendleton is the person responsible for teaching both Greg and myself how to read. And we appreciate that. We've used that skill quite a bit over the years. Well, we're here to celebrate reading. And this is a perfect place, in my view, to do exactly that. But I want to acknowledge the partnership, the school district, the city, the, our colleagues, our new friends from Footsteps to Brilliance, the library district. What a great partnership that is represented this morning. So how is it possible for us to work together in a collaborative way. Well, from the city's point of view, you know what, kids? It helps our city grow economically. And as Greg mentioned earlier, we know that reading on a third grade level when you're in third grade is a predictor of all kinds of success for you kiddos. Um, how many are in first grade? Raise your hand. How many are in second grade? Raise your hand. Okay, next year is an important grade for you second graders and first graders, you have to look forward to that too. Because if you're gre reading at grade level by third grade, then most likely you're gonna do well through the rest of schooling and high school, you'll graduate, you'll go on to college. And we want you to go on to college because we know that will lead to greater jobs and financial success. Uh, maybe I am reading with the books with the, on an the iPad. The Footsteps to Brilliance app was actually introduced in the classrooms as a pilot program two years ago. The program's success motivated Buena Park School District to introduce it to all the students in the district from pre-K through third grade. I got a glimpse of how the technology was helping students learn to read and how they were utilizing their devices. 
So we are inside one of the kindergarten rooms here at Pendleton Elementary, and here with me is Rebecca Bergstrom. She's their teacher. And Rebecca, I see all the kids on their iPads here. How long have they been doing this for? About two weeks. We've been actively on footsteps, and they have picked it up so fast, and it's their favorite time of the day. How do you guys bridge or tie in the iPads or the footsteps to brilliance with your curriculum? Well, they are so excited to be reading, but they don't know all the words yet. So the Footsteps app reads them too, reads the sentences to them, and then they can touch individual words that they do know, and they are so excited to see, I knew that word, and it, the app reinforces their reading. Each student has a super secret password, passcode, right. so they can just type in their pictures. Mariana, can you come and type in your pictures for me, please? Can you show me your pictures? We like to use Footsteps Brilliance as a small group center. Instead of an old listening center with the big earbuds and the cassette tape from when I was a kid, now we have about four or five kids on at a time doing a student-run listening center. So usually the bandwidth is is better with the loading. I load it on. As a school district moves into the age of connectivity, Superintendent Magnuson explained the technical improvements of the school's digital infrastructure to deliver a broader new approach to learning in Buena Park for the future. We're in the final stages in the Buena Park School District of completing an entire rebuild of our district network to provide the capacity to enable all students and staff to simultaneously be connected, stream multimedia voice and video to wireless devices for years to come. Second, develop 21st century teaching and learning environments. Classrooms that facilitate the teaching and learning of 21st century skills of creativity, collaboration, critical thinking in a way that perhaps we didn't do in the 20th century. Second graders are learning how to create their own ebooks on the Footsteps to Brilliance app. And their teacher also explained the ability to communicate online and through email with students and parents. Now I'm in the second grade class, and here with me is Amy. She's their teacher. Amy, I see up on the screen behind us a book created by one of your students, Gavin. And can you guide us through and let us know how this was created and how it ties into the app? Absolutely. Um, the students have the ability, once they read a story, to actually go in and create a book. They have two different options, or ones that work together. Um, the first option is, is that they can create um, with the clip art and the backgrounds that were already in the story that they just read. So it's giving them support, vocabulary support, if they want to go in with, and think about what the story said. And if they want, they can retell the same story in their own words. They also have the option to create their own and create their own story, which Gavin did. Um, and so you're going to see it's not a perfect paper. There's mistakes there, but that's actually a great ability for me to be able to go through and talk to students about where mistakes are and how we can make them better and improve their language skills. Um, the reason I actually put it up was because I had him email it to me yesterday. I have the ability to email this to his mom. So if I want to send her a sample of what it is, she can see that. And um, it also gives us a reflection of what their work is and what they're, um, what they're capable of doing. So when you're meeting with parents and with other educators, you can show them what they're doing. So Gavin, your book is actually up there and we're talking about it with your teacher. Tell us about your book and how you made it. Well, um, since the story had different life cycles, I decided to use them in my book. Mm -hmm. So I had the dad and mom. Was it hard? Um, kind of. How long did it take you? Um, a few minutes. Oh, that's really not bad. And do you like working with the iPad and doing this at school? Yes. So are you impressed with what this has been doing with the kids? I'm impressed with what um, the options are, what they can do, and the fact that they can do it at home. I think that's the most empowering part is the fact that they don't need to necessarily only be doing it in my classroom. It's not something I can do all day, but it's something they're familiar with, so they could be doing it any time of day or night at home, which is awesome. So I'm here with Mary, and she's the president of the Buena Park Library District. And Mary, tell us about Buena Park Library's role in all of this. Well, our role is to help recruit. 
uh, to, to educate the community about this program and especially uh, working through with our primary programs at the library for and preschool programs to let the parents know, show them how to sign up to get their uh, passwords so that they can start using that materials. But we, through these people, hopefully that they will teach their other people in their community, especially in the Korean community and in the uh, Hispanic speaking one. I'm so pleased that this program does give the uh, children the, the ability to learn to read in Spanish too if that's their primary language at home because coming in without any of the Spanish vocabulary and the ability to read in Spanish keeps them behind in learning to read in English. A lot of the students in the city of Buena Park who aren't English speakers tell us how this can impact that. Yeah, English speak, non-English speaking students or, or students that do not have a great grasp of the English language, obviously come to school with deficits. They're challenged to not only grab a hold of the language, but also to grab a hold of the content in a language they're not familiar with, or not as familiar with as perhaps coming out of more affluent households. So we think this is a great equalizer. We think that over time, children that are exposed to the Footsteps to Brilliance program through our Boyne Park St School District website will have an opportunity to get a leg up on their language skills, which then will give them a leg up on grasping content and skills when they come into uh, school as young as transitional kindergarten and uh, kindergarten and then first grade. Earlier we were in classrooms from kindergarten to second graders and they didn't have any issues working the app. It was super easy for them to maneuver and work through it and I understand that at home you guys want the parents to also support the kids. Tell us how you guys are going to get the parents who aren't that tech savvy to go through with it too, go well, through it w with their kids. Well, the kids will show them. Uh, our research has shown us that about the second time that the child's on the program, automaticity will strike in. And so if we can just get the kids cycled in twice into the program, then there's a sense of ease. And then also we created the program with a user interface that's simple, and we wanted to make sure that it was non-threatening, not only for the child, but for the parent as well. And one million words, it sounds like a lot. Is it really a lot? They will get there. They will get there. You know, they're motivated, and children nowadays uh, are in tune with digital technology, so the schools will help with some of that, and the parents will be also advocates. So we'll get them in school and at home. The One Million Word Challenge is on, and it's up to the students at Pendleton Elementary to lead the charge. Buena Park School District is expanding this program to all schools within its district as it moves to be a model innovative city in education. For more information on the Footsteps to Brilliance program, contact the Buena Park School District at 714-522-8412 or visit the district website to download the app. It's free to every family with pre-K through third grade children who reside within the Buena Park zip codes and service areas. We'll keep you updated on the progress as well. I'm Kathy Beck for Buena Park TV3.